Okay, so it's a custom amongst the Ashkenazis in the world that when a baby born boy, the Friday night before the bris, okay, everyone go to the house where the baby is. And they're having a sauda there. And at that sauda, they eat chickpeas, like we mentioned. We eat something else that's called nuts, also the minhag. That you knew about it also, huh? Spencer, no, okay. Okay, and we say divre Torah. They say, we say a word of Torah there. Why is it? We have to understand. So let's start first from the source. Where does it come? The source to it you can find in a Gemara, in Masechet Baba Kama, page 80, folio 1. Pashut. There the Gemara tell us that when the sages was walking on a journey, they arrived to a city, to a place, and they was doing what we call it Yoshua Ben, Yoshia Ben, or what we call it today, Shalom Zachar. No Shalom Zohar, Shalom Zachar, that's the proper name. There's other few names that they call it Ben Nolad or Ba Shalom. There's few names to it. But the common name amongst the Ashkenazi Jews becomes Shalom Zachar. They should call it Shalom Zachar. Shalom is peace, or welcome. Zachar is a boy. But people call him Shalom Zachar. So I try to understand where is it, and I saw a source to it that the Lithuanian Jews better to call it Zachar, so they call it Zachar. Milshon, Shamor, and Zachor. We say on Shabbos. So what is Shalom Zachor? The Friday night before the bris, the member of the congregate of that close or related to the baby or to the family go to the house where the baby is and they share a meal, okay? After the main meal, they go there usually and they have a meal with the family of the baby born, the newborn. And they eat special food, like we mentioned, hummus, that it's called chick chickpeas. And we'll explain what is it, why, and then nuts. And then obviously they have to say the vratoa. Until here, everyone understand? Is there any question? Ah, you have a question. What sort of nuts? Peanuts or tree nuts? Okay, we'll see. There's all different nuts that you can eat. It doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't make Peanuts a difference. Totally different. Well, I'll explain. No, no, no. We'll wait. What's up? You know, in English we say vachabiki. You know vachabiki? Yeah, I like okay. English. Okay. Nice. Oh, you want in Yiddish? Okay. So, we have to understand that from here we see that this custom of Shalom Zachor, it's an ancient custom. It's not just came today because the Gemara been written 2,500 years ago. So this custom has not just been happened lately. Like many people think it's a new custom, I don't have to go. If people have been invited, actually I saw that uh, source that say that uh, the, has the father, when he invites the, the friends, he should not actually invite people personally. The same on the bris, that you should announce it the Gabbai shouldn't answer it, but you shouldn't invite people specifically. Follow? So why on Friday night? Why Dafka Friday night and not any other night? So let's go to the source in Shulchan Aruch. In Yore De'a, Siman Resh Samechei, Resh Samechei is 265, Sa'if Yudbet, that means verse 12, the Ramah, Rabbi Moshe Iserlish. Everyone know the Rabbi Moshe Iserlish, the Ramah? He paskin the alachot for Ashkenaz. He lived around 400 years ago. That's mean in the 16th century plus minus. And in his halacha, he paskin like this. That the Friday night, okay? Belel Shabbat, Friday night. Osim Sauda, they're making a meal. Vekulam olchim lebet avalad. You're making a meal. And everyone, listen to the word. Everyone go that the house of the newborn baby. Okay? And then he said, the main reason for it, he said that because on Friday, everyone is gathered and they are available. He bring the opinion of Trumat Adeshe. What does it mean? That usually people, when they have business, they might have to leave the city they have to go to other places to work. You know what I'm saying? They're going on business. They're away. But on Friday night, usually everyone is at home with his own family. 
Therefore, because everyone is there, the custom is to go on Friday night to the house of the newborn baby to share the meal and to say the Torah, to hear the Torah. That's according to the Ramah that he brings to Ramat Adeshen. The Zohar HaKadosh explains it completely differently. And he said like this, all the prosperity that we get during the week, sorry, come from the Friday. That means from the Shabbos. And we say it. And Lechad Odi, Nachon, Ki Mekor Abracha. She's the source, the Shabbos is the source for all the bracha that we have in. So the Zohar said that all the prosperity that comes during the week, when does it come from? From Shabbos. So on Friday night, that is Shabbos, we go dafka to the house of the newborn baby to draw more prosperity on him. That's the main reason that we do it on Friday. That's the second idea. The third idea, I'm going to bring the Taz. How many of you heard about the Taz? Not many, okay. The Taz, Rabbi David Segal Halevi, he wrote commentary on the Shulchan Aruch. And he also, in the Shulchan Aruch, in Yore Da'a, Resh Samechei, 265 in Siman Yud Gimel, that means verse 13, he explained that the main reason that we're doing on Friday night, that we don't do a bris until the baby will see Shabbos. That means that the baby will have a chance to experience one Shabbos, to get the prosperity from it, and only then we'll do a bris. You follow? That's the third reason. The fourth reason that I saw that it's brought in a book, Brit Avot. And the book of Brit Avot says something very interesting. If we look at the baby, why after Friday night? Usually when there is a scholar person come to town, a great Talmud Hochem coming, the first thing that we do, we want to run and go and see him. When do we usually go and see him? On a Friday night, Nachon? Because everyone is there. He said, when a baby born is exactly like a righteous man. Why? Because a baby never sinned. And if a baby didn't sin, we obligate to go and visit him. The same like we obligate to go and visit who? A great tzaddik. So from here we see the value of a baby like a tzaddik. Why? Because a baby never sinned. And he considered a tzaddik. So that's the fourth idea. The fifth idea, it's brought in a book that's called Nefesh Arab, the soul of the rabbi. And in his book, he explained why do we go to visit on Friday night. And he brings totally different explanation. And he says something like this. We don't go to visit the baby. You know why we're going? And he brings a source from the Rambam. We're going to visit the mother. Why? Because the mother given a birth. And the Rambam say in Ilchot Shabbat, and his Ilchot Shabbat in chapter 2, Halacha Gimel, that means Halacha 3, chapter 2, Halacha 3, the Rambam say that if there is a person that's sick, we obligated to go and visit him. And when do we go and visit him on Shabbat? And even if he need us to do Hilul Shabbat for him, we obligate to do it. And here come Nefesh Arab. And he said, you know why we're going on Friday night? Because the mother of the baby have a law of Hole. That means a person that is sick. And not only that, that she's sick. She is a Hole Besakana. That means that there is a danger. And we know that the mother for the first seven days after she given the birth, Hazal consider her What it mean A person that's sick, that has shalom, something harm can happen to him. So the first seven days, we have to look after them. So come Nefesh Arav and say, we obligated to go to who? To the house of the mother. To see if she need any Hilul Shabbat. That if she need us to help her with Hilul Shabbat, to boil water for her, just remember, in the olden days, they didn't have ESCOM. Not that ESCOM worked very well, but they, have ESCOM. they didn't have ESCOM. So, if she needs to boil water for her, if she needs special food for her, so who's going? 
Not has the shalom, we tell a Gentile to do that, or we tell children under the age of 13. Us, that over the age of 13, that obligated for the mitzvot, the Rambam say, go in and do it ourselves. So the Fesharaf say that's the main reason that we're going on Friday night. Maybe the new mother that given a, bu- a birth need our help. So that's the five reasons why we go Dafka on Friday night. We're celebrating Shalom Zachar. Okay. Why is it called Shalom Zachar? Anyone ask yourself why? So I'm going to bring a few, few ideas to it. And I'm going to bring the first source. We start always with the Gemara. I'm going to start, sorry. Um, I have been told that you have a Shalom Zohar on a Friday night because the baby hasn't been brisked and he shouldn't be allowed to go through a Shabbos without a no, That's what I said, the Taz. That's what I brought, the Taz. So you obviously didn't listen to me. The Taz say that. Shir'e Pnea Shabbat. That he must see the Shabbos. And after Shabbos, we're allowed to give him a priest. That's the Taz. Rabbi David Segal Alevi. Rabbi David Alevi Segal. Okay, that's the Taz. Ture Zahav. The, the name, what do they call it? Taz. Ture Zahav. Okay, that was the name of his Hebrew. Okay. Why they call it Shalom Zoho? Why? So the Gemara in Masechet Nida. Page 31, folio 1, sorry, folio 2, no? Yeah, folio 2, I'm just looking my notes. Not folio 1, folio 2. The Gemara says like this, Kevan sheba zachar la'olam, ba shalom la'olam. Don't say it to a woman. Kevan sheba zachar la'olam, because a male came to the world, came peace to the world. I'll see again, I'll say it again. Kevan sheba zachar la'olam, because a male come to the world. Ba shalom la'olam. Came a peace to the world. No, you don't agree. Why? Because the wars, all wars are started by men. That's exactly what I was saying. The other way around. Okay, so there is more. Wait, wait, wait. Rega, rega, rega. You want to do a debate? I'll finish the debate in one second. But wait. Because this male caused war in the world. Which male? Jewish male or Gentile? No, the Jewish didn't. Show me one war that started by the Jew. Because they're taking us. A person that comes to kill you, you're obligated to defend yourself. Huh? Joshua's war, Joshua's war was a command from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And we didn't go into war. We asked him to leave. They didn't want to leave. So we conquered. Pashut. This is our land. HaKadosh Baruch Hu given it to us. And you know when we bought it? Abraham Avinu. Yaakov Avinu. You know where he slept when he had the dream? Before, long before Joshua. That from him started the 12 tribes. When he ran away, before he even was married, where did he sleep? Haramoriah, <laughs> nakhon? So you'll see that the war is not from us. And usually, if you look, you'll see that who have more faribul, a man or a female? No, I'm not going to be so popular, <laughs> but just for you. Okay, let's continue. The Yabet. The Yabet say, why do they call it Shalom Zachar? Why do they call it Shalom Zachar? That there is here the word Zachar, Milshon Skira, to remember. What there is to remember? To remember the baby that before he born, where is he for nine months? In a mother's womb. And before he just came to the world, he, uh, the malach, the angel, asked him to take an oath that he should never sin and she should keep the Torah. So that's why it's called it Shalom Zachar. From the memory to remind them that he have to keep the mitzvot. Another explanation why they call Shalom Zachor, again the Abed's bring, if you look at the word Schira, we say that Milshon Zikaron, to remind, we come to remind them and to comfort him, okay, that when he was in a womb in his mother, the angel taught him all the Torah. You know that Midrash? Yes. 
that when a baby in his mother's womb, the angel come, and in nine months he teach him all the Torah that there is. And just before he's ready to come to the world, the angel give him a flap here. That's why it always have a dip here. Did you know? And he forget all the Torah. And then he come out to the world. So we come to tell him, remember that you knew all the Torah. And we come to comfort him that he forget. Now we're going to go to hummus. You remember? Hummus called Arbas. Okay? What is hummus? It's a chickpeas. In a meal, on a Shalom Zoho, we do a meal. Nachon? Everyone know? We go to eat. We say a blessing. Brachot. And with that blessing, we're uplifting. We're making it more holy. We're saying Divre Torah. Not only that we say Divre Torah, there is certain food that we should eat. One of them is a cooked chickpeas. Boiled chickpeas. Why Dafka chickpeas? Because chickpeas is round. To remind us that the world is circle. But not only that, Hazal say that in the house of the Mona, what do we eat? Chickpeas. We eat lentil, chickpeas, round. Nachon? Why Dafka that? That we come to comfort. Listen to that. We're coming here to comfort who? Come to comfort the baby about the Torah that he forgot. That we come to share with him, okay, the idea that Nachon, that you learned Torah, now that you lost it, we're coming to comfort you. We're coming to share with you. Now you understand why chickpeas? So when they ask you that, Spencer, you can tell them. Okay. There is another reason why is it called Arbas. And why do we eat chickpeas? That's not the only reason. There's another reason. Arbas is milshon arbe. What does it mean, arbe? To multiply. Akadosh Baruch Hu promised Avraham Avinu. What did he promise him and beat when he took him out? He said to him, look at the star. That that's how your descendants are going to be multiplied. That means that the main reason that we're eating hummus, because it's called arbas. What does it mean, arbas? When I say hummus, it's chickpeas. Okay, but it's milshon to multiply. That we're coming and we're saying that, please God, we're all going to get multiplied. That's the main reason that we're eating chickpeas. Then we say to eat nuts. You remember? You ask me, Simon, which nuts make no difference. Because every nut that you eat have two shells. Nachon? Anyone disagree or agree? Baruch Hashem, no one disagree. When you break the main shell, and then you have like a tin, you know, on top of the nuts always. What do you call it in English? A skin. You call it a skin. Okay. That's come to remind us what? The mila, the bris. What do we do in a bris? We first do the milah, cut off, nachon, the orla, the foreskin. After that, there is pri'ah, that the moel, on top of the brit, there is a membrane. He tear the membrane. So when we eat the nuts, that we call it a gozim, to remind us of the bris. Now you understand why there is special food that we eat, that we should eat, and that meal of Shalom Zacho. Any question? It doesn't really matter that you destroy the, the, the chickpea into hummus, or should you really be better to eat the hummus, I mean the chickpea whole and the nut in its original shell? No, 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 no. The idea is that you eat the hummus. Also, have to have good skin. Yeah, but that's one skin. It doesn't have two. But the, the hummus, we said, because it's round. To remind us that the world is round. What's come, what comes away, what goes away, what comes away, everything is the same. You don't see it anymore like that. Sorry? Once it's already ground up. No, it doesn't ground up. It's come ready. You don't ground up. It's come ready. Chickpeas. You just boiled it. I said boiled chickpeas. I explained boiled chickpeas. That call it hummus. Come with that thing. It's come, uh, yeah, it's coming in a tin. You, you boil it. You just put it in hot water for... I was asking in, in the 
tab you get the full volume. Right. Ah, no, no, that, that's that right. tab, that tab, sorry, I didn't understand, sorry, my, my mistake. That tab is already, they took the chickpeas, put it through a grinding that's machine, and they added with saying. that, they done a process of hummus, they put with that tahina, it's not, uh, what do you call it, I'm not master chef, but I'll explain, I think that Spencer better than me. But what they do with that, they put few things and they make from it like a spread. Right. No, the chickpeas that we eat, we usually eat it round, right. not See, ground. Most of, it, most of us refer hummus as in the tub. That's right. But that's, that's what I say, chickpeas boiled, boiled chickpeas. You remember at the beginning of yeah. the show what I say, it's not in a tub. Okay. Then there is a mahloket among the poskim. Is that meal that we eat on Friday night considered saudat mitzvah or not? Because if you look, we already eaten at home, nahon? Now we go in there and we have another saudah. Is that considered saudat mitzvah or not? So there is some of the poskim say, no, it's not saudat mitzvah. Most of the poskim paskin that it's saudat mitzvah. And the Ramah say like this. In Saif Resh Samechei, sorry, Siman Resh Samechei, that means Siman 265, Saif 12, that means verse 12, and he said like this, Vehu gam saudat mitzvah, and the meal that we go to eat at the house of the newborn baby, consider saudat mitzvah, a meal of a mitzvah, it's a mitzvah meal. So when we go and eat there, just remember that it's a special meal. No, no, no. Saudot of Shabbat, we have Shalosh Saudot. Which one? Friday night, Sauda Rishona. Shabbos morning, Sauda Shniya. Shabbat after Minha, after Minha, Sauda Shlishi. And then we have Saudat David HaMelech, Saudat Revi'it. Nachon? Melave Malka we call it. That's called Saudat Revi'it. But Le'alacha bin Pasken, that we obligate to eat three meals on Shabbat. Friday night, Shabbos morning, and then after Minha. When it says Saudat, you have to do it with bread. Do you follow? But when it's come to Saudat Shlishi, there is a commentary, there is a, there is a question about the, the Mefarshim. Some people can't eat bread. Where's Moti? Moti. Moti can't eat bread. He doesn't eat bread a lot at all. So what should I do? He asked me a few times, you remember? So I say, if you really can't eat bread and so dash lishin, it's heavy on you. So the Mefarshim say, eat mezonot. I didn't want to tell Moti that there is another leniency, that if a person can't eat mezonot, if he's really full, he can eat fruit. But I see that Moti eat mezonot and fruit, as Baruch Hashem he fulfilled. Sorry, you can't eat mezonot, what? Chef Shama, Chef Shama, Chef Shama, Chef Shama, Mato Shev Lima Hora, in a front, there. I didn't want to disturb. Don't disturb, just sit, just sit. Okay. No, I didn't want to disturb the last thing that you said. If he can't eat mezonot, and he's too full, and he's really... Too full. Full, eaten enough, you know? You don't know what is too full. Okay. Too full, it's too full. He can't, he can't push anything anymore. Yeah. So at least fulfill it with saying Bore Priya Aetz, Bore Priya Dama on fruit. Okay? And then she call obviously to drink something. We say that there is something similar to Shalom Zachor or Shalom Zachar. The Sfaradi do. The Sfaradi call it Brit Itzhak. Did you hear about it? The Brit Itzhak, it's similar, but they do it the night before the bris. What's happening there? The, minag, the custom of the Sfaradi, that the night before the bris, they go again to the house of the newborn baby. They do a sauda, they do a meal, and they learn the Zohar HaKadosh, they read the Zohar all night. And they do sauda. And it's called Brit Itzhak. Brit Itzhak. Why they call it Brit Itzhak? I saw the commentary of Aruch HaShulchan in Yore De'a again, Siman Resh Samechei, that means 265, in Siman Vav, in verse 6, the Aruch HaShulchan explained, why did they call it Brit Itzhak? So he said, because Itzhak Avinu was the first one to have a bris 
on eight days. Do you know that? Who was, if they ask you ever, who was the first person to have Brit on eight days? Yitzchak. Yitzchak Avinu, no Yitzchak. Ma'u, haver shalcha? Yitzchak Avinu. Yitzchak Avinu. Chas v'shalom. Ma'u, haver shalanu? No, because Avram was already 90 years old when he decided to do have a Brit. Okay, so why do we do it dafka the night before the Brit? Now, there's another explanation. The book of Mate Moshe explained when it's come to regarding of Inyane Mila in Siman Dalet, in Perek Dalet, he explained like this. And he said, you know why you do it dusk at the night before the breath? Because, listen to those words, what the Mate Moshe said. And he said like this, the night before the breath, the evil spirit, the Satan, the harmful spirit wanted to harm the baby. That's See, their awful. word. You know why they want to harm the baby? Because they know that tomorrow is going to do a bris. What does it mean doing a bris? Taking the tumor out. Taking the impurity of the baby boy. That means that you make him pure. And we know that all of those harmful spirits regarding as, as the tumor. And they want to harm the baby. Therefore, the Mate Moshe say that we sit and we study Torah and we read the Zohar and we say brachot and we do all of that, all the harmful spirit when there is Torah can't come in because the Torah is like a fire. So, she, so they disappear, they run away. That's the main reason that we're doing the Brit it's hot on a, on a night before the bris to protect the baby. You understand? And by Ezrat Hashem, that we should all merit, not only us, all the Jewish, period, the Jewish people in the world will merit to have smachot. Everyone understand what is smachot? Yeah. Happiness. Happy, joy, happy, joy, happiness, and to see many Brit Milah in by Ezrat Hashem, and that merit that all the Jews will fulfill the mitzvah of Brit Milah Properly with holiness, Akadosh Baruch Hu will send us the Mashiach Tzitkenu Bimera Be'amenu Amen Ken Yiratzon. Amen. Amen.